Continuing with our discussion um, of rotational momentum, we're going to do an example. It's an example that comes in two parts, and it should be an example that we do in class at some point. I just want to give you a heads up on it. Let's say we have uh, a dumbbell, a set of dumbbells, which is one dumbbell with two weights on it, a mass M and length L. Each one of these is a mass M. We'll say the rod has a negligible mass. So all we're concerned about is two point masses M at the end of this dumbbell. What we're going to do is throw a clay ball, also mass M, we're going to throw this clay ball at the center of the thing. So when it hits, it's going to hit exactly at L over 2. And so what we want to look at is how this object moves <clears throat> afterwards. And the things that we have to consider are linear momentum, that's a P, and angular momentum. That's a capital L. So, looking at linear momentum, the, the way that we can reduce this problem for linear momentum, again, we're going to reduce everything to its center of mass. We have mass m moving with speed of v. I should have said that, moving with the speed of v towards a mass 2m. It doesn't matter how they're distributed, that's just what's going to happen. I have a mass m heading towards a mass of 2m. After these two objects hit, well, now I have a mass of 3m moving. So we're going to say mv is equal to 3m times v final. Masses cross out. And, and v final is just this initial velocity over 3. And that's all there is to linear momentum. That's a very simple situation. Looking at angular momentum, things might get more complicated. <clears throat> Angularly, we, we look at the initial angular momentum. It's going to be equal to the final angular momentum. For, for the clay ball, it's going to be mv times a, where a is the straight line distance between the center of mass of the system or the point of rotation of the system um, and the line of action. Now, if we look at this and imagine what's going to happen, when this thing hits here, it's hitting at the exact center of mass of the system, which means there's not going to be any rotation. Well which means that this is moving towards the center of mass of the system. And so this A thing actually is zero. So the initial angular momentum is zero. In this case, there's no angular momentum to worry about. So all that happens is the clay ball runs, hits, in, hits the stick, and the whole thing moves away with the speed of V over 3. The next thing that we're going to do with this same setup and the way the, the problem that we're going to look at in class words it is that we're in space and we're astronauts and these are things that we are exploring because when you're in space there's nothing better to do than throw clay balls at sticks. Same idea, we have m, m separated by a distance of l, but this time we're going to take our clay ball mass m, throw it with our speed of v0, and it's going to hit and stick to one of these masses. And again, we're going to look at linear momentum, and we're going to look at angular momentum. Looking at angular momentum, <clears throat> after the collision, the whole thing is going to spin about its center of mass. So after the collision, we're going to have 2m up top. Oh, sorry about that. m at the bottom. There's going to be a center mass here, and the whole thing's going to rotate around it. This is going to cause things to spin. It's going to rotate close to the center of mass. So what we need, because the center of mass is now the pivot for our system, what we need is the location of the center of mass. YCM, XCM, doesn't really matter. We'll call this top end zero. It's going to be helpful to us. Okay. So we have 2M up there times... 
well that's at zero, plus m times l all over 3m. So the location of our center of mass here is going to be, that all goes away, m l over m, 3m, l over 3. So our center of mass is L over 3, right there, which means the center of mass for this system as well is L over 3 for the end. Now we don't have to worry about anything like a parallel axis theorem because we're talking about two-point masses. So we'll have to deal with the moment of inertia in a second, but not right away. <clears throat> so this distance is L over 3. That's the distance between the line of action for this mass M and what will be the pivot point. Things are going to spin around there. So the initial angular momentum is going to be the angular momentum of this mass, which is mv0 times l over 3. That's that straight line distance. We talked about this in the video last time. The straight line distance between v0 and our point of rotation. So that's our initial angular velocity. This thing is not moving. This bar is not moving to begin with, so we don't have to deal with that. And that's going to equal the final angular momentum of the system. The moment of inertia of the system times omega z, omega. How fast the thing is going to be spinning afterwards. So what we need to explore is what the moment of inertia for the system is. But well, we already kind of have it labeled up there. So the moment of inertia for that system is going to be 2m times L over 3 squared plus m times 2L over 3 squared. That's how far away it is from that pivot point. So our moment of inertia comes out to be uh, 2ML 2ML squared over 9 plus well, that's going to be 4ML squared over 9. That's 6ML squared over 9. So our moment of inertia is 2 thirds ml squared. So we have mv0 times l over 3 is equal to 2 thirds ml squared. 3's go away. l goes away. m goes away. All that's times omega. Sorry about that. Carry it down. So the final spinning, final angular momentum of that system, omega is going to be v0 over 2l. That's how fast that whole thing's going to spin about that point. At the same time though, linear momentum is conserved. This thing is free to spin. But in terms of linear momentum, it's just what we had before. Mass m moving at a speed v0 towards a mass of 2m. So after these things hit, the final velocity of the mass 3m is going to be in this direction at v0 over 3. You can refer to the other slide and how we got to that. So we have two kinds of motion happening. Linear, the, linearly, this rod with 2m up here, m down here, is moving forward at v0 over 3, and at the same time, it is spinning around end over end about this center of mass point with an angular velocity that is v0 over 2l. This is just one example of the things that we can and probably will be doing with angular momentum. We covered it twice before, but really do pay attention to how we get the angular momentum of a single mass moving around a point. That's all we have for this.